Well, I'm Kyle. I'm from the Courtauld Institute, and I was chosen by a process of intimidation because I was the only one <laughs> who brought my laptop with me, which has, uh, has proved greatly useful in the end. So I'm now going to have to <laughs> decipher my notes. So you'll have to forgive the the Ulster accent to de deliver at great speed. In addition to me trying to uh, get through my own writing here. So a bit like everyone else, the historiography section was pretty much impossible to complete um, for our group. We had people right from early medieval period right up to contemporary. So again, we came up with several um, overarching themes which applied to everyone in material culture, the main one of which would have been um, basically objects as texts as opposed to um, the, the interaction with, between objects and persons. And we thought that was the main sort of debate that was going on at the minute in material culture. What we spent most of the session doing, and we had very comprehensive slides setting all of this out, <laughs> Uh, was basically coming up with a list of difficulties that we thought specific to material culture on one hand and also um, more generally to Chase generally. We came up with a list of difficulties that we thought had arisen and then came up with a series of ways we thought they could be dealt with. Um, the first difficulty we came up with was that, particularly in material culture, um, there are a wide range of um, experts in each area. Anyone looking at material culture will have several different objects they'll be dealing with. We have people dealing with coins, documents, all of these things together, and we needed basically some sort of forum whereby all of those experts could come together and it would become easier to contact them. Um, right, if I can read this. Um, then there was, we came across a problem that basically um, every person that comes along as a researcher to Chase seems to be reinventing the wheel. Um, everyone picks up very practical um, information on how they access archives, who are the important people to access, and what state those archives are actually in when you come to them. We all will get that in our experience, but a lot of the time, because researchers are so isolated, that information is all wasted. So again, we felt we should come up with some sort of forum so that that information could be shared, and all of the experience gained by researchers visiting these um, archives could be shared as well. Uh, right. So basically the solutions that we came up to these things were, first of all, like the um, visual culture group, we decided that we would create a material culture group which would um, work together and meet regularly. Um, this would create an internal network, and um, basically we would seek Chase funding for training, for example, at the National Archives, for specific events that related to material culture. Um, sorry, my writing is dreadful. This, this was wonderfully set out, can I just say, on my two slides. <sighs> The main um, thing that we suggested that was very useful, and that this would really apply not only material culture, but right across the Chase network, was basically how searchable student profiles were. The main difficulty that a lot of people said that had arisen was when you're going through the student profiles, it's not always obvious from the title of um, your research proposal what is actually in there. And quite a lot of the times, you know, you might pick up on one word, the, one that came, the word that came up in our particular group was Viking. Um, no, I'm not saying who that was relating to, but <laughs> but in any case, that would, reading that, we'd initially think, well, that's, uh, there's nothing in common with my own research there. But what we discovered in discussing this was that we actually all had quite a lot in common, and there were lots of crossovers between various issues within our research. So what we suggested was that um, on the student profiles, we should add searchable keywords, if that were possible, um, dealing with themes, also texts that you might have done, or placements that people might have taken in working in different institutions. And if they were made searchable, that you could actually just type in a word of something that was relevant that you were doing in your research at that moment. You could see if someone else has come across something which may not be in your area, but which is still relevant to your actual research. So we thought that would be very useful indeed. We then um, decided that there was also um, room for a forum to be established, um, and again, specific to the material culture area, but also for all areas, whereby training could be organized. Um, a lot of um, outside institutions we discovered really weren't interested in providing one-to-one -one training to students. So if a researcher basically contacted that institution and said they wanted some training in archival material or something, they were going to say no. But if we established some sort of forum, which would then allow everyone to sort of say, that they needed a specific type of training. If there were enough people kind of coming along and saying, well, actually, I need that as well, you could then go as a group en masse to an external trainer, and hopefully then they would provide that training. And again, then that group could seek funding from Chase if that were possible as well. Um, let me see what else did we have. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think actually that's it, unless any of my group can remember anything else that I've forgotten, because my notes are absolutely illegible. 
Yeah, I think I've covered everything that we did, but yes, as I said, um, you'll have to forgive that rather mixed up presentation, but um, you can rest assured that had my slides come up, they would have been um, very informative indeed, <laughs> but um, thank you for that anyway, thank you. Thanks, and apologies again for the uh, slide mix up. <laughs> a good trick, of course, would be to just give in an unformatted USB, and then you can claim anything for your slides, but I'm sure that's not what you did. Um, number, lots of really good suggestions there, which we'll definitely come back to you on. I mean, one thing to look out for is the Material Witness Program, which has already run, is going to run again, and I quite like the idea of tying a bit more, you know, more closely a kind of student-led kind of strand into that, because that's at the moment been something that key academics have run, and, you know, the cohort has kind of, um, you know, participated in some of the same events and had discussions, but to more formally involve kind of ideas from your group or more broadly is a great one. Um, in terms of kind of thinking about needs analysis, just to pick up on that, we do we circulated last year and we will do again sometime reasonably soon a kind of training survey. Last year we did have to chase quite a large amount of the cohort to get them to fill it in, and we will chase you again because you need to fill it in. But oh, that's there's a, there's a bit there that says, you know, wh which bits of training have you participated in and what are we not doing and what would you like us to do? So that is one way in which we can collate. If enough of you say we want to do this, um, then we can do it. There is also a student-led um, call that goes out where you can propose bits of training. Uh, so again, as a group, you can say, well, we, want, we would like this and we'll fund it. So I suppose what I'm saying is, you know, that kind of feeling when you have money just burning a hole in your pocket that you just want to spend, it's kind of... Hmm. Rob holds the budget, so he's going kind to... Of, hmm. <laughs> no, no, I only look after it. It's just resting in my account. The, um, um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think everything Paul said is, is true, absolutely. There are various sort of mechanisms that, that, that we're, we've tried to put in place to, to get, you know, get that sort of input from you. But I can see that if it's coming from, from a group that is sort of meeting regularly and thinking about these things, then that's probably going to be a more effective m mechanism for, yeah. for, for actually yeah. thinking about so it than, than, than sort of asking you to fill in the survey individually and, you know, not, sure. and then looking at the responses. So I think that would be very welcome. In terms of the, um, the student profiles, uh, I'm glad Claire isn't in the room because she, she would be weeping at this point because you can already search the, the, the Chase student profiles. Um, uh, the, the identification, there are some, each of your profiles is, is tagged with um, some research themes. These uh, are, have been imposed after the fact, so if, if, if you think that your, um, uh, your, your project has, has got the wrong tags attached to it, then, then do let us know. But yes, it is searchable, um, and so yes, you can find the word Viking. Uh, it, um, oh, could themselves? Yeah, oh, I see. Right, right, right. Ah, okay. Yes, got you. I understand. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, that's certainly something we can we can look into yeah. into to make that self interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we've got number five. I got five, six, seven. Oh, okay. You're together. <laughs>